Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Blessings and favor to you all. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Amen. We do welcome you to the Ladder House Ministries where the glory is expected. Amen. We do give praise and glory to God on this morning. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you, 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 and especially you for joining us on this morning. Amen. We ask that you do us a favor. Please like, amen, and please share this broadcast, amen, with a loved one, a family member, a friend, a brother, or a sister, amen, on this morning. Amen. Truly, we give glory to God. Amen. Our God is so awesome. He's so wonderful, and we do thank him on the day. Amen. Before we begin our worship, um, I personally would again like to thank each and every one that played a part, amen, in the pastors and first ladies um, appreciation on last week. Amen. We were thoroughly surprised. We were thoroughly blessed. And we truly, amen, appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. To the Ladder House family, you all are the best. Amen. Don't ever let anyone tell you anything any different. Amen. You are the best and we know you're the best and we thank you. Amen. For all that you do. Amen. Truly, again, we do give God praise. Amen. Again, those are watching via social media, please, amen, share this broadcast. Please go to our YouTube page, The Ladder House Ministries, and subscribe to our YouTube page. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. On this morning, we're here to give God praise. Amen. We're here to magnify the Lord. We're here to exalt him. Yes. Amen. On this morning. Amen. Does anybody know the highest praise? <clears throat> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's a universal word, amen, that's used universally, amen, to give God praise, amen, glory to God. And this morning, Father, we give you the highest praise for you alone are worthy. You are our rock, you are our strength, God. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, God, for being our strong tower. Lord, we thank you, God, for your very presence here on this morning. Father, we ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just saturate this atmosphere with your presence. Father, we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that you encamp your angels around this place, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that every spirit that's not like you, God, will be subdued and have to fall into subjection to your presence on today. Any spirit that's not like you, God, does not even have access to this atmosphere on today in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, God, that you will cover each and every one under the sound of my voice with your blood, Father. Lord, each and every person that comes in the doors, dear God. Lord God, let them just feel your presence. Let them feel your anointing on this morning, God. Father, we decree and declare on this morning, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that every yoke, God, is destroyed. Every stronghold is pulled down in the name of Jesus. Father, we just ask you, dear God, that you would just set the atmosphere, God. Lord, let it be an atmosphere, God, that's conducive for deliverance. An atmosphere of healing, God, in the name of Jesus. Let it be an atmosphere of transformation, God. Lord God, we just pray, ask you, God, come do what you do, God. And Lord, we just thank you, God. We'll give you the praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Again, what's the highest praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. We just want to worship the Lord on this morning. Amen. How many know that God is the King of glory? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you on this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, we will. Thank you, Jesus. Bow down and say you are God. Hallelujah. You are God. Hallelujah. Every man. Thank you, Jesus. Bow down and say you are King. You are King. Lord, we take this moment, God, just to worship you. Come on. 
victory. You are victory. Fill this place. Fill the hearts of your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to be in your presence. We just want to, Lord. this week, don't you just want to be with God? Don't you just want to rest in the arms of your Father? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to be with you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Restoration, God. Manifest with your people. Mind renewing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this move on today, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Strongholds, you gotta go in the name of Jesus. Sickness, you gotta go in the name of Jesus. Mind, mind, the spirits, you gotta go in the name of Jesus. Fear, you gotta go in the name of Jesus. Every wicked, demonic spirit, you gotta go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We just want to be with you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to shake the dust. Amen. Off of you on this morning. Amen. Can you stand to your feet? Amen. And give God praise on this morning. 
Amen. If you're in your house, amen. Glory to God. If you anywhere in a dwelling place, as long as you're not driving a car, amen, you ought to stand to your feet and give God praise. Amen. Because he kept us. Amen. While we slumbered and slept, amen, God did not. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Even when we're in those moments of shedding tears, amen, he was right there to comfort us. Amen. We, we could find the solution. Amen. He was the solution. Amen. When fear tried to take us out, amen, glory to God was right there. Oh, my God, my God. Amen. Whenever it felt like we had no answers, whenever it felt like our prayers were not going to be answered, whenever it felt like we were broken, whenever we felt like we weren't going to win this battle, amen, whenever it felt like we go glory to God, whenever we felt like we weren't going to be restored, whenever it felt like we weren't going to come out of this thing, whenever it felt like we just might have settled in this place, whenever it felt like the devil was having his way, whenever it felt like the plans for people were having their ways in your life, amen, God was right there the whole time, and he was letting them know, no, this is my child, I have a hedge of protection around them, they're dwelling in my secret place, oh my God, my God, you want to give God praise, Amen, because God kept that thing away from us that we didn't even know was there trying to take us out. We ought to give God praise. Amen, because he didn't let that car accident happen. We ought to give God praise. Amen, because he didn't let that sickness take us out. We ought to give God praise. Even when our money was funny and our change was strange, God still made a way and provided. We ought to give him praise. Amen, because he is who he says he is. In spite of what we see and go through, in spite of what we hear, in spite of what we feel, God is still God. Oh, my God, my God. I don't know about you, but I can't be a fair weather Christian. I can't be a conditional praiser. Oh, my God, because if I'm a conditional praiser, if I'm waiting for fair weather in order to praise God, I never get to praising him. Because it seems like sometimes when we look around, trouble is all around us. But in the midst of trouble being around us, our God said, I'm a present help in the midst of trouble. Oh, I'm going to give him praise even in trouble. I'm going to give him praise when I don't feel like it. I'm going to give him praise because this was due to his name. Amen. We always act like God owes us something. Amen. But get that mindset out of the way. And let's give God praise on this morning because we owe him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God. Battles have been won while people were praising. You don't have to wait to see that very thing. You don't have to wait for it to happen. I want to let somebody know you can shout right now because you are victorious. You know why? Because God is on your side. You are victorious. You know why? Because he sent angelic assistance to help you through that thing. Oh, God, we thank you on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Even as we live in this wicked world, God, we thank you. Even when folks' eyes are off of you, God, we are still giving you praise and we're saying thank you. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, my, even while people are having their eyes on materialistic things, even while folk, amen, are caught up in the things of this world, Lord God, we're giving you praise on this morning, God. Oh, God, for you are the great I am. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I praise you. Oh, I give you glory, God. Oh, I thank you, God, for breath. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, God, I thank you for breath. Oh, my God. See, sometimes we, we just we try to look at the big things. We're waiting for God to do something huge in our lives. Amen. But if we got breath in our bodies, amen, we ought to give God praise. If we got activity of our limbs, we ought to give God praise. Oh, we thank you, God, for the small things. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I want to let somebody know your breakthrough is not far away. Oh, my God. You've been travailing for a long time. Oh, my God, but the travailing is just what God is using. Amen. Glory to God as a catalyst to give birth to the very thing that you're pregnant with. Oh, my God, we thank you on this morning. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you on this morning, God. Oh, God, we're not worthy, God. It's nothing so great that we have done, God. But it's by your grace and your mercy, God. It's by your love, God. And we thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. You didn't have to die on the cross, Jesus. Oh, you did no wrong, Jesus. But because you loved us so much, Lord, oh, God, you had to fix it. You wanted to fix it, God. Oh, my God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, Father, we thank you. And Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, on this morning, God, as we stand here, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we ask you, God. That as I stand here, God, that you increase, God. Father, I pray, God, as I stand here, God, to do what you've assigned me to do on this morning, Lord. Father, I ask you, God, that your anointing, God, will fall fresh on me in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask you, allow your word, God, to go forth with power, God. In the name of Jesus, let your word bring about transformation, God. Let your word bring about breakthrough, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we decree and declare Holy Ghost take over on today. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost take over. Oh my God, my God, the devil thought he was winning. He thought he had his way in your life. And we will be honest about it. We thought it too. Amen. But I want to let somebody know on today. Amen. The Holy Ghost is about to take over. In the name of Jesus. Oh, your help. Oh my God, your help is on the way. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, somebody out to decree and declare Holy Ghost take over in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody your fasting and praying was not in vain. Oh, God, I thank you on this morning. Oh, my God, you may not see anything happening right now, but your prayer and your fasting was not in vain. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, God, her, God felt every tear. He heard every cry. He has not forgot about you. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to on this morning, but I want you to have assurance on this day, amen, that God has not left you. Oh, God, oh, my God, oh my God. God has not forgotten about the plans he had for your life in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, oh, my God. Lord, we just praise you and give you glory. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. For, Lord, we know if our enemies had their way, oh, my God, they we would have been devoured a long time ago. Oh, God, but we thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you for healing and restoration, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Oh, say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you can't see it. You can't see it. Amen. But your praise, oh my God, is causing something to happen in the spiritual realm. Oh, you can't stop praising him now. Oh, I, I know you don't feel it yet, but keep praising him. I know you don't see it yet, but keep praising him. I know you still, I know you still feel that weight, but keep praising him. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you. 
I know worry is still speaking to you. I know stress is still talking to you, but you just keep praising God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, God, Lord, we ask you to bind the head of the devil in the name of Jesus. We ask you to bind any retaliation, God. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus. Cover each and every person under the sound of my voice with the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, we're going to a new dimension on today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Like Bishop Davis tells us all the time. Your trouble was just a platform for your promotion. Oh, my God. Big trouble, big promotion. Big mountains, big breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, I just thank you from where you brought me from. Oh, my God, my God, my God. I heard a lot of brain cells in my younger day, but I still remember where I was. And I remember having the mindset and even echoing what the devil said. You will never come out of this. You will always be in this place. That's why I'm crazy about my praise. My God, my God. Oh, because now I understand that what the devil was speaking was all a lie. As soon as he began to utter words, the lies began. Oh, my God. But I thank God that the lie did not line up with the destiny. My God, somebody, ought, you ought to give God praise. Oh, glory to God. We ought to give God praise. You know why? Because God didn't look at us what we were. He looked at, oh, my God, he looked at the destiny. Oh my God. Oh God, I thank you. God, watch this. God is Alpha and Omega. And what I love about God is, amen, that Omega was already established before the Alpha. Mm, my God, my God. Oh my God. You got to catch that thing right, even while we're in the midst of it. Amen. God already sees the end of the thing. Oh my God. He knows the plans that He has towards us. Amen. Plans of peace. Amen. And not of evil to give us an expected end. So while we're toiling in the storm, while we're, watch this, while we're pressing our way, God already sees us in our prophetic destiny. Oh, don't miss that. Oh, 
oh my God, what do you mean, Brian? If God has already established the Omega, if God has already established a prophetic destiny, amen, the very things that we face and go through, amen, the very things that's trying to keep us away from those things, amen, don't have the power over God's spoken word that's already been established in our lives. Oh my God, amen, what God has already planned, what God has already spoken, amen, what God has already drawn out, amen, it's more powerful than what we're seeing and facing and going through. Oh my God. It's hard. It's hard because we see what we see. And we know what we know. And we feel what we feel. And we hear what we hear. But God. Ah, glory to God. Oh, we love my God. Let's get to this word on this morning. Y'all already taking away my preaching time. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Oh, somebody feels like giving up is much easier than going farther. Mm, my God. Oh, there's a blessing in your father, though. You just keep pressing. You don't have to press by yourself. God is your present help. Jesus said, if I, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. I want to let you know the comforter is here. Amen. In other words, comforter is also translated help. Amen. It feels like you don't have any help. Anybody ever said, I can't get no help? Amen. So and so won't help me. They know I need some help. Amen. That's all right if they don't want to help. Amen. I want to let you know you have a supreme help. You have divine help in the person of the Holy Ghost. My God. Thank you, God. Oh. I believe I said earlier, Holy Ghost, take over. In the name of Jesus, let us go to the word. Y'all done took three more minutes away from me. John 15. John 15. We're going to be reading verses 4 through 8. John 15. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it seems like there's no words <clears throat> in the English vocabulary to really express how much we are thankful to God. <clears throat> My God. God, we praise you. Mm. Hallelujah. For somebody, this storm is bigger than any storm you've been through before. Why are you saying that, Brian? Because I just want to let you know that God is still able. God is unchanging. So the same God that brought you through the last storm is still the same God that's walking with you in this storm. Mm, my God. Oh, God, I thank you. John 15, 4 through 8. It reads, <clears throat> abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, oh my God, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. 
and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Verse eight, herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Amen. We see that word disciples is not just limited to the 12. <clears throat> the word disciple means learner. So as long as we're following Christ, we are disciples. <clears throat> Amen. On today, we want to begin a series for the next few weeks, maybe three or four weeks. We want to begin this series and talk from this series about abiding. We want to talk about abiding. The word in our dictionary, the word abide means to dwell. It means to reside. In other words, it means to be present habitually. You know, to be, to, to do something by habit is just something, watch this, that we do a lot of times second nature. Sometimes we do it without thinking. In the Greek, the word abide is minnow. It means to remain. It means to stay in a giving, given place, a state or relation. In other words, abide ties to relationship. Abiding speaks to a connection. And people have heard me say this many times over again here at the Ladder House Ministries. Whatever we connect to creates a flow. There's some things that have been flowing from unordained connections. But that's okay because I know we're in a season of Thanksgiving and we're about to approach a season of Christmas. But as we're in this season, we're going to take a look at ourselves and focus on a body. Abiding is not just, watch this, abiding is not just a visitation, but abiding is dwelling. Abiding is living in the Lord. Abiding is residing or taking residence in him. Abiding is where we can spend time with our father. Abiding is when we can spend time with daddy and he can love on us. He can talk to us. Amen. Glory to God. He can help us through. Amen. He can remind us, amen, of who he is. Amen. He can, he can propel us. Amen. Through the storms. He can speak. Amen. To the things that we're going through. When we are abiding with, with our Father. Amen. We are abiding with our Lord and our Savior. Whenever we are abiding, what abiding is, is spending time. Amen. With the Creator. Abiding is spending time with the Shepherd. Abiding is spending time with our strength. Amen. Oh, well, glory to God. Where we can spend time. Amen. I mean, abiding is where we can spend time with the one that speaks those things that be not as though they were. Oh, y'all silent on me on this morning. Amen. We are abiding with the one that speaks those things that be not as though they were. Amen. What do we bring to him in the abiding if he speaks something different? Amen. What was has to be what is. I'm sorry. What was has to be what was and what he speaks has to be what is. Amen. In the abiding abiding place because again he is a creator amen so it's so all abiding amen we are abiding with the one amen can, can speak what we have not even seen yet oh my god abiding abiding is spending time amen we're with our father amen the amen the one who gives us joy 
the one who gives us peace, amen, the one that gives us comfort, amen, why, sister, what, amen, amen, during the times when we can't even, even express where the joy is coming from, amen, even at times when we cannot even express or explain why we're feeling so peaceful, maybe you have never been in the situation before, when it seems like all hell is breaking through, amen, whatever your mind, amen, seems like, amen, that you're about to lose it, but all of a sudden you feel a peace, you cannot explain it, all of a sudden you may not be laughing, you may not be happy, amen, but you feel a joy, amen, those things are not emotions, those things are characteristics of our Father, these are things that we get when we're in the abiding place. this earlier when I said that sometimes we that the things that, that that flow to us because we're connected to things that are not ordained my God but in the abiding place abiding with the father is a place that's not tarnished it's a place that's not tainted it's, it's, it's abiding amen is a place amen it's not polluted or perverted abiding is a place where we get the proper nourishment amen for the fruit that we're about to produce abiding watch this abiding is not an affair amen but abiding is a relationship abiding is constant love it's not a part-time love oh my god oh my god i know we should dance to that song by h town back in the day part-time lover amen but i want to let you know right here on today amen that's your father's love it's a constant love. If you feel like you're not lovable, if you feel like nobody don't love you, get into the abiding place because his love is always constant. If you ever doubt God's love, all you gotta do is look at the cross. Look at his son on the cross, bleeding out, pierced to the cross. Amen, all for us. The abiding, the abiding. Why are we talking about the abiding, Brian? Uh, it doesn't seem like to be a shouting word, amen, for the next the series, if you allow me. Amen, we're just going to be talking. Why the abiding place? Because we got church down pat. Why the abiding place? Because we know how to dance already. Why the abiding place? Amen. We ought to know how to hum my son that it up Why the abiding place? We are, oh my God, my God. The preacher already knows how to hymn in the hall. Amen. Why the abiding place? Because we need power. Why the abiding place? Because your enemy is trying to sift you as sweet. Why the abiding place? The enemy is trying to destroy you. Like Peter said, he's trying to devour you. The enemy wants to take you out. Amen. Watch this truth be told. Amen. He wants to use you as your own worst enemy. The enemy wants to make you feel like and convince you to continue saying, I'm not going to make it out of this. I'm not, I'm nothing. Oh, this is all I can expect. God's forgotten about about me. I want to tell somebody the devil is a liar. We're talking about the abiding because we need breakthrough. We need healing. Not just in our physical bodies. Somebody's spirit needs healing. Somebody's mind needs healing. Mm. My God, my God. Oh my God. We can do church but our eyes closed. You know how I know? Because we used to play church when we were young. And we had it down pat. We knew how to shout like sister so and so, like mother so and so. Oh, we knew we knew how to sing like deacon so and so and brother so and so. We knew how to preach like the pastor, like the pastor was preaching. We knew exactly how to run like the pastor would run. Amen. But we're here in the abiding place. Why are we talking? Why are we talking about abiding? Because abiding is where we grow spiritually. Abiding is necessary in order for us to bear fruit in abundance. Abiding is vital. Oh my God, oh my God, so we can walk out our purpose. Amen. Somebody's next promotion is contingent on their on their on their abiding. Amen. Your next dimension. Amen. Requires an abiding deliverance. 
from that thing that is embedded deep on the inside of us requires abiding. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about those things that's hidden on the inside. We don't want to talk about those dark things. We don't want to talk about those things that we've been carrying for a long time. But when they get to the abiding place, there will be deliverance. Oh my God, my God. We got to get ready. Get ready to experience the abiding place. Get ready to experience and operate in supernatural. You know why? Because you are abiding. Get ready to live in dominion. Oh my God, my God. Get ready to birth out of barrenness. Get ready to birth out of nothingness. You know why? Because you've been abiding. Oh my God, my God. You better get ready to walk it out. I'm not talking about the song, but get ready to walk it out. Walk out your freedom. You know why? Because you're in the abiding place. Oh, oh church. Amen. Church, we come to church. We have a good time. We know how to do church. We get an emotional high. But then we get in our cars. And on the way back home, we remember about everything that's breaking us. We remember about everything that's causing us to be depressed. We remember everything that's bringing about fear. Oh, but the devil is a liar. We're not having church. We're abiding. Oh, my God. We're not seeking how to have church. We're walking in kingdom. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh God, I thank you. In the abiding place, I want to let somebody know that you're a weapon. Yes, yes, yes. See, for so long, it feels like you've been the one that's been beat up on. You feel like a punching bag. You feel like that old pin cushion. You remember mom and grandma used to sew. And when they got finished with a pin, they would put it back in that pin cushion. Somebody's feeling like a pin cushion on today. But I want to remind you, baby. I want to remind you, mama. I want to remind you, brother and sister. I want to remind you, daddy, that you are a weapon. I want to encourage you on a day to get into your body, please. Talk about. I tell me this, this, this is for me, too. Because I talk about it, too. I to get more time to the abiding place. We'll find time for everything. Any and everything. And when we get broken, when we face obstacles, we're like, what are we going to do? Amen. But watch this. And with the abiding, the, in the abiding place, the abiding place has to become a place of habit. Watch this. It does not take years to develop a habit. A habit can be developed in five days. If you don't believe me, amen, if you don't believe, if you used to waking up at seven o'clock in the morning, amen, start waking up at eight o'clock. And as you do it continually, what will happen is you'll sleep past seven and right into eight. And you know why? Because you have developed a habit. Amen. Watch this. Amen. If we decide we want to pray five times a day, using it for an example, if we want to pray five times a day and we continue doing that for five consecutive days, what will happen is it becomes a habit. Amen. Abiding, amen, has to be a habit for the believer. Abiding has to be a habit. Amen. You know why? Because the earth is waiting for Oh my God, my God, I'm getting ahead of myself. The earth is waiting for the sons and the daughters of God to manifest themselves. And I want to let somebody know you can keep right on waiting until we decide to abide. Get to the text. Jesus is speaking to the disciples. And he's speaking to them, and he's speaking to us about a body. The Lord uses the relationship between a branch and a vine to explain the connection and relationship with us and him. So Jesus says, look, he says, abide in me and I in you. 
Sometimes we make relationships so complicated. You don't have to wine and dine Jesus. You don't have to take him to the movies. Come as you are. Let him abide in us. But watch this. In this commandment, there's also a condition. But the condition is based on us making the decision to abide. So when we abide in him, he will abide in us. So, 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 so in choosing to abide in him, it keeps us in contact with him. It keeps us in relationship with him. It keeps us in tune with him. You may be saying, well, Brian, the Lord said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So why is abiding necessary? I'm glad you asked. Just because he's present doesn't mean we're connected. The promise of his presence, watch this, gives us the truth that the Lord is always there with us. Watch this. So when we decide to connect, we won't have to try and figure out where he is. If we abide in him, he promises, watch this, to meet us at the abiding. You remember? Oh, no, I ain't going there. Um, so, 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 so he says, I never leave you nor forsake you. So whenever we're looking for God, who left? Who moved? Because from what I read in the word of God, it says God cannot lie. It says his word is truth. He says not one jot, no tittle of my word will fail. So when that Jesus told the disciples and tells us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But that does not guarantee a body. My God, my God. He said, what I need you to do, I'm here for you, but what I need you to do is step in my presence. What I need you to do is get in my face. What I need you to do is plug on in. Oh my, and once you do that, then I will abide in you. Ooh. Watch this. As Jesus continues with this parable, he gives us another reason to abide. He says the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. And in the same way, we cannot produce fruit unless we live in him. Watch this. What he's saying is the branch is not capable of producing fruit on its own. <laughs> Nobody won't be real with this, but I'll do. It. I'll say it. We try to produce things on our own. And the more we produce, the more we like that hamster on the wheel. We, 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 we're moving, but we ain't going nowhere. And the more we the more we try to produce on our own, the more we wear ourselves out. Watch this. Watch this. The enemy, watch this, not giving him any credit, but the enemy watches. And he waits for us to become weary. You know, while we're weary, not only physically, but we become weary mentally because we're putting in all this work, but nothing is being produced. You know why? Because the branch cannot do it apart from the vine. In order for the branch to produce fruit, it has to stay attached to the vine. Watch this. <clears throat> the branch relies on the vine and needs a vine in order for the branch to fulfill its purpose. Hmm. Watch this. Because the branch doesn't just, just hang out there for nothing. The branch is not out there just for show. The branch has purpose. Now, now let's make the analogy plain here. Jesus identifies who the vine is. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. 
The vine that we are to abide in, oh my God, somebody ought to get happy right here. Amen. Somebody ought to really realize, amen, what's going on in this parable. Amen. Somebody, amen, ought to realize who the vine really is. Jesus is saying, I am the vine. In other words, he said, your Lord and your Savior is the vine. Amen. The Bible tells us he's the Lamb of God, but it also says he's the Lion of Judah. Amen. Your vine is a lamb and a lion. Your, your, your vine is a both servant and king. Your vine is the great high priest. Your vine is your intercessor. Your vine is Emmanuel. God with us. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. In other words, he's the source for everything that we, the branches, need to bring forth fruit. In other words, by going back to the branch having purpose, the branch has purpose. So anything that has purpose has an assignment. Amen. But the vine is not going to leave you by yourself while you're carrying out the assignment. As long as we are abiding. Divine assignments are too big to do in our own flesh. <clears throat> I know some folks think they smart. We ain't smart enough. We're not strong enough. The branches need the vine. It is vital for the branch to abide and connect to the vine because the branch, again, has an assignment. As being an extension from the vine, the branch is to bear or bring forth fruit. Watch this. To get to the importance of bringing forth fruit, we have to, to, I'm sorry, to define what the uh, fruit is. In this case, Fruit is the, uh, uh, the progeny or the posterity of God. I was waiting for somebody to say, Brian, what in the world? In other words, the fruit is God's offspring. Oh, my God. The fruit is, 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 what, uh, uh, fruit is what originates or comes out of something or someone. Oh, my God. Going back to what I said earlier from Romans 8, amen, amen, it's for the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Watch this. The manifestation is going to be absent if there's no body. You know why? Because what the creature is looking for is what, is what only can come from God. And what, and what the branch is, the branch is an extension of the vine, amen, but the branch cannot bring forth what the vine can, the branch can only carry it and bring it forth but the branch can't create it. So the very thing that, cre that the creation is looking for, the very thing that this world needs does not come as, as it does not come from the branch, it comes from the vine. Watch this. The assignment and the fulfillment of the assignment depends on a body. Watch this. Being fruitful and multiplying is what we were created to do. Genesis 1 tells us. God said, let us make, watch this. God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And he said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Replenish means to fill. He wants us to fill the earth with our fruit. He wants us to do, he wants us to subdue the earth. He wants us, he wants us to have dominion in the earth. Amen. But we can't, we can't fulfill that assignment without a body. We can't, we can't only walk in what we are created to do without the body. I want to pause right there and tell somebody you have value. 
You know why? Because you created in his image. Whenever God created you, he had you on his mind. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are valuable. Oh, my God, my God. There's purpose in you and for you. Oh, don't let anybody ever tell you different. Because the scriptures right here tell us that we created, amen, in his image and his likeness. And in doing so, we have purpose to bring forth. So that's the assignment of the branch is to be fruitful and multiply. So Jesus says, he that abideth in me and I to him bringeth forth, now he says, much fruit. Talk about abundance. If we abide in Jesus, bearing fruit is certain. I'm going to say it. If we abide in Jesus, bearing fruit is certain. What does that mean? There's no doubt. It's a sure thing. In abiding, we won't be able to stop bearing fruit. It's so amazing how we, how we devalue ourselves. It's so, watch this, it's so amazing how we look to the world for things. But I'm going to tell you something, the world does not have what we can get in the abiding. Amen, we're looking for ideas, we're looking for intel. We look, oh my God. Amen, I'm going to let you know, you're, you're like kingdom CIA. You're, you're, you're the intelligence of heaven. Amen, because heaven has ideas. Heaven has downloads that the world's never heard of. But the world hasn't heard of them because the branch want to buy. We're looking, we're looking at the created to help sustain us instead of the creator. We're looking to become friendly and abide more with the created than the creator. But, 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 the, but we can't have dominion of the created if we're walking in the image and the likeness of the created and not the creator. In the abiding is where we bear fruit. Watch this. What does bearing fruit mean? Bearing fruit implies reproduction. What do you mean? Fruit has seeds within it. Seeds are meant to reproduce more fruit. So in other words, when the fruit has been brought forth and consumed, it provides an element to ensure production continues. Oh, my God. We have been so used to the expiration of stuff. We live by the expiration of things. We, 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 our, our driver's license have expiration dates. If you have milk in your refrigerator, expiration date. Eggs, expiration date. We're so used to living according to limits. And we forget that we were created without limits. We are seed. God promised Abraham seed. And he told him that the sea is going, to, is going to outnumber the stars in the sky. Start counting and call me when you finish. We, watch this, we put things on ourselves that the creator never meant for us to be fitted with. He has given us, watch this, he has given us what we need to constantly reproduce, but the reproduction requires us to abide. In order to be fruitful and multiply, we must stay connected to Jesus. Why? Because without him, he says, you can't do anything. We have to stay connected. Because if there's no connection, there's no longer a flow of sap. 
Sap is the juice or the energy that flows through the plant. Oh my God, y'all to catch this in your spirit. Without a connection, we lose our sap. What is sap in the spirit? The sap in our spirit is the Holy Ghost. And if we lose our connection with Jesus, we lose our connection with the vine. Amen. We lose our connection with the Holy Ghost. Watch this. As Jesus is talking about abiding and bearing fruit, he slides something in there in verse number six. And he gives us the danger of not abiding. He said, if we don't abide, the danger of not abiding is that we wither. In other words, a sap stops flowing. The word wither means to shrivel or become helpless. It means to decline. In the case of the branch, it means the branch no longer bears fruit because it has now lost its connection to the vine and is cast out. But thank God that Jesus didn't leave us there. <laughs> he comes back and says, he, he says, uh, 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 he comes back to the fruitfulness of the abiding. And he says, if you abide in me and watch this, now he changes it. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. In other words, our will is what we desire. And he says, it shall be done for you. Come on now. We say, God, let your will be done. And God tells you what his will is like, oh, that ain't what I desired. I can't talk about nobody but me. Watch this. When Jesus was in the garden, he said, Father, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, because at that point, he said, this is my will for this cup to be taken from me, but not my will, but your will be done. He said, my, let my, this, watch this. What was Jesus doing in the garden of Gethsemane? He was praying. And while he was praying, amen, Jesus being the living word, had word in him, amen, so he knew that in order for his prayer to come forth, he had to pray the desire of the Father. Oh, my God. Watch this. What this, this when he says, you should ask what you will. See, it's amazing how we take um, B and C clauses of text and we run with them. But this text is not telling us that abiding in him, like Pastor Webb used to say, and it doesn't mean that he's our Santa Claus. Abiding in Jesus, the living word means abiding in his words and having his words live in us. Watch this. This speaks to the abiding or the connection, transforming our hearts and our minds to be connected to the Lord's will. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Because sometimes my will is to go upside people's heads. Sometimes my will is to... <laughs> Sometimes my will is to hold you around your neck till you stop breathing. Just, just a quick pause. Y'all don't want to be real. I'm, I'm, I can be real. Sometime at home, my, 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 my will is, is to put my foot through the wall just, just to get the aggravation out. My will is to do it the way I want to do it. Like Medea say, sometimes it seems like God take too long. Oh, y'all don't y'all ain't with me this morning. Amen. So, so sometimes I want to do it the way I want to do it, but that's not God's will. And how do I know that's not God's will? We find out in the body. Let's take a little bit further. Psalm 37 and 4 says, The light thyself also in the Lord, and he will he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I've heard it so much. Oh, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Yes, he will. But there's a condition to that. What is, what is, what is Jesus getting at here? As we look at it, as we look at Psalm 37 in, in, in the contemporary English version, it says, uh, um, 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 this, in other words, when it says he will give thee the desires of thy heart. 
And when it talks about us delighting ourselves in him, it says, uh, uh, this way, amen, do what the Lord wants. That's, that, that's what we get from the abiding. So, 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 so in, from the standpoint of our text, our text says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, shall, you shall ask what you will. Your will, again, is your desire. So watch this, because we've been abiding, our will and our desire has not changed. Yeah, our will and our desire no longer aligns with our selfish motives. It no, it no longer aligns with our flesh. But he's saying, if you, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, what he's saying is because you've been abiding with me, amen, and my words have been abiding with you, amen, you're now aligned with me. My, your, your heart is now my heart. Your mind is now my mind. What you desire, you, what, you, your, your desire is God, whatever you desire, whatever your will is. And when we get to that very place, amen, we, be, watch this, we begin to echo what God says. We begin to echo what God wants. We begin to pray what God prays. We begin to release in the earth what God's released out of heaven. Oh my God, and by doing so, By doing so, fruit is produced. You know why? Because the word is echoing. Oh, my God. Watch this. The abiding puts us in a place where we are so close and connected to God that we are so in tune with his heart, his will, and desire that our requests align with what the Lord wants. I love what Charles Spurgeon said. He says, he said this way, he said, because of the abiding, our will is the actual shadow of God's will. Oh my goodness. His word, watch this. Why is it, Jesus, that you say, if, if we abide in you and your words abide in us, we shall ask what we will and it shall be done. Because again, now his word is in us, his desire is in us. So whenever we're speaking, we're speaking his word. We're speaking that we're praying his will. Amen. And the Bible tells me, amen, that his word shall not return to him void, but it shall accomplish what he has set it out to. I'm sorry, it would accomplish that which he pleased, and it shall prosper in the thing to where he has sent it. Amen. So, in other words, now because we've been abiding. Oh my God, because we've been abiding, whenever we speak, whatever we speak has to come to pass. Somebody's taking that context too long out of, out of context. And we're speaking materialistic things that God has never spoke to us. We're speaking things, amen, that God has not, that, that God does not have a desire for. Amen. But people of God, whenever the body of Christ gets into the abiding place, the things we start praying, the things we start decreeing and declaring, you want to look around, things will start happening. It's not at the, it's not at the ability of man. It's going to be some supernatural stuff taking place. God wants us to bear fruit. Watch this. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, when you abide, I'll make you an ambassador. When you abide, I'll make you an agent. Oh, my God. When you abide, I'll make you a conduit. In other words, I'll use you for the flow. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. Amen. There are no greater works without the right connection. There are no greater works without the body. Amen. We're just happy sometimes coming to worship service. We're happy sometimes just coming to Bible study here, there, a few times here and there. That's not abiding. Abiding is God knowing me. I don't know about you, but I, I got to get to the place where God's like, it's you again. Because I understand there's some things, there's some things I'm looking for. There's some things I'm looking to happen. Watch this, there's some things that I need. Watch this, there's some things that have been revealed to me that this world and man will never be able to give to us. But it's only going to be given by the Father. And because of that realization or revelation, however you want to put it, epiphany, however you want to put it, because of that, I realized I had to abide a little bit more. So I work towards a close. 
No, that's the only one. I didn't say I was closing. I heard a man of God. I didn't say I was closing. I said, as I work towards a close. <laughs> so as I work towards a close, as Jesus said, abiding brings glory to God. The Father is glorified when we bear fruit. Oh, my God. Ultimately, abiding connects the branch to the vine, which causes the branch to produce much fruit, which brings glory to God. People of God, we cannot overlook the abiding. Uh, oh, my God. I'm not just talking about, again, just having an affair with the Lord. I'm not just talking about giving God an hour or two of your week. I'm talking about abiding. I'm talking about a staying place. I'm talking about whenever I go to work, I'm still abiding. When I go to bed at night, I'm abiding. When I go use the bathroom, I'm abiding. Oh, when I, oh my God, when I go shopping, I'm abiding. When I'm driving, I'm abiding. It's an everyday thing. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the presence of God. I want his glory to be upon me because in his presence is the fullness of joy. And his right hand places forevermore. If I'm in my abiding place, when man says no, all we got to do is look to the Father. The Father said, I got it right here for you. You. Man never thought you could have it, but because you've been abiding and because you're lining up with God's will, get ready, get ready. I hope Bishop Jakes don't charge me for that, but you better get ready for the supernatural for far too long. We've been looking for things with our eyes, but because you've been abiding, you won't see it with your eyes until you recognize it in your spirit. That's what the abiding place is going to do. The abiding place is a lifestyle. And because it's a lifestyle, it's a continuance. And because it's a continuance, it's going to continue to reproduce. And because it's reproducing, you can't put an end to it. Oh, my God, my God. I want to tell somebody the fruit that's waiting on you to come forth, the fruit that somebody's waiting to come forth out of you. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, my, they're waiting for you to bring it forth. You know why? Because they're shifting their atmosphere. It's relying upon your fruit. But the whole time we've been holding on to it because we hadn't been abiding. We've been in the face of a lot of people that have a lot of nonsense to say. We're always around naysayers. We're always around people that's, that's sending stuff through the grapevine. But you got to get to the abiding place because there's something on the inside of you that's waiting to bust out but it can't come out until you abide we must get to the abiding our capacity depends on the abiding what do you mean Brian capacity is the ability to contain something oh my god my god in the abiding place you better stretch your capacity because while you're abiding there's going to be some more stuff downloaded there's going to be some more things sent your way and you can't hold them in the container you're in right now so we got to get to the abiding and let God stretch us out and pour in oh my God we are hearing so much right now about getting back to normal I want to let somebody know that you're entering in a new normal and that new normal is called the abiding. The new normal is supernatural manifestation. The new normal is living according to the kingdom. The new normal is walking in the divine. The new normal is operating in authority and dominion. Oh my God. In your past. Amen. The past. Oh my God. The past. In the past, your fruit may have been malnourished. Oh my God, your fruit man saying it was drying up, 
You may have seen some leaves on the tree, but never any fruit. I decree and declare in your lives right now that you're about to come into a place of abundance in the name of Jesus. Not because I said it, but because it lines up with the abiding. Oh, my God. I want to tell somebody you have so much to offer. There's a seed in you waiting to bring forth fruit. Somebody connected to you needs what you have. I'm talking about supernatural fruit. I'm talking about the manifestation of things beyond the natural. I'm talking about the manifestation of things beyond man's ability. We've got to get to the abiding. There's an ingredient that's been missing from us. An ingredient that kept us from coming out of bondage. There's an ingredient that's been missing. Oh my God, my God. That's been missing from evicting strongholds out of our lives and strongholds out of our family's bloodline. And that ingredient is abiding. Are you wrestling with some stuff that your great grandma and great granddaddy wrestled with? Are you wrestling with some stuff that's all, all in your cousins and them. If so, get to the abiding place because you can shut all that down right now. They've been dealing with it for years. You've been dealing with it for seasons. But when you get to the abiding place, get ready for deliverance to hit your family. You know why? Because you, the branch, has been abiding with the vine. And the vine, oh my God, is starting up some stuff. Oh, he's bringing about some fruit in the name of Jesus. Abiding is what's missing to rid ourselves of mind binding spirits. Oh my God. I want to tell somebody the storms in your life, the trouble you've experienced, the hurt and the betrayal, the attack on you and your character have tried to distract you from getting to your abiding. The enemy and your enemies have tried to keep you from abiding, hoping, oh my God, hoping that you will never realize that you have purpose, hoping you'll never realize that you can walk in your purpose, hoping you'll never realize of the authority that you have, oh my God, my God, the devil, your enemy, and them other enemies too, the devil ain't the only enemy, but them other enemies too, They've been sitting back, eating their popcorn, drinking their Coke, waiting on you to wither up. But the devil is a liar. They didn't see you in the midnight hour crying. But while you were crying, you were abiding. Oh, they didn't see you in the midnight hour. We couldn't get nobody to pick up the phone. How you were crying out to God. They didn't see you when you were weak. But God shifted that thing and gave you strength. Oh, because when we abide, I want to tell somebody deliverance is coming. Healing is coming. Victory is coming. Because we are abiding. And because because you are abiding, you are no longer a victim, but you are a victor in the name of Jesus. The abiding keeps us connected to Jesus. The abiding keeps us connected to the truth. And the Bible says, and you should know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Your abiding is your free place. You've been bound long enough. You gave the enemy a chance. You gave all the look ahead a chance, but now it's time to get to your abiding. You mean I can get down on your knees? Well, that's all right. Sit down and get to an abiding. Lay down if you have to. Crawl if you have to, but get to your abiding. Uh, it seemed like You were just a branch. Just blowing in the wind. Hmm. Never saw any fruit. But didn't I tell you earlier? It's the Holy Ghost take over. You can't leave here today. Hmm. You can't leave here today without making the decision to abide. 
But if you do, it's your decision. You don't have to dwell or sit in that mess no more. You were designed to abide. You're, you're, you're designed. Oh, my God. You're designed to speak what God is speaking. Knowing that it'll come to pass because you're his sounding board. Because you're his child, you're his vessel. Because you're abiding, I decree and declare that your branch will no longer wither. I decree and declare that you shall bring forth much fruit. Brian, how can you be sure? How can you be sure this time, Brian, that the branch won't wither? It's because the vine that the branch is connected to. I want to leave you with this. Yeah, keep, keep praising. I want to leave somebody with this. Let's have a doubt. See, I, some, I've, I've looked at this thing. Sometimes the doubts originate because we're looking at the branch and not the vine. Let me tell you something about the vine. The vine is an everlasting God. The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Watch this. He fainteth not, neither is he weary. Never. Never. Oh, my God. Just because you're weary don't mean God has stopped moving. You just keep a body. Tell you something else about the vine. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Your vine is from everlasting to everlasting. The vine has never lied to you. Why are you saying that, Brian? Because we hang out with folk. We still keep giving folk chance after chance. I think they lied on us. I think they talked about us. We'll still be right there in their midst. Want their approval, want to hang out with them, want to be a part of the crowd. But God has never lied to us. He's never abandoned us. So why would you not want to abide? We abide on Facebook all day. We we'll, we'll abide on YouTube all day. We'll abide. We'll binge watch on Netflix. We'll, we'll abide. Abiding is not waiting for stuff to happen before we pray. We've already prayed before it happened. We've already been in that place. And, I, and I'm not saying that things don't shake us. I'm not saying things don't hurt. I'm not saying that things don't make us cry. I'm not saying things won't break our hearts. Oh, but when we get to the abiding, when we get to the abiding, you gave up. Because you saw more trouble than you saw solution. If that's the case, don't you stop abiding? If nothing else, like never before, there's a time to press hard. The Bible says when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, that he was praying so hard in the midst of what he knew he was going through, that he had sweat like blood. But he keep pressed the harder. Watch this. As he was praying and pressing the harder, God sent him angelic assistance to give him strength. We can't stop right now. The 
be a body. Do you know who's there waiting on you in the body? I'm talking to me too. If we knew, we'll be eager to get there more often. Ah, my son, did it bullshit. Man has showed you their hand. You know what to expect or what you can't expect from man. And if we be real, we have, we, we have summed it up to be inadequate. Get to the body. Don't you know that men wait for you to be qualified to put you at certain seats? God can bypass men's qualifications and put you in the seat. You know why? Because they're going to need the information that you have. <laughs> I'm not talking about a college degree. I'm not talking, I'm talking about things that you only get in the abiding. Yeah. 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 You remember a couple of weeks ago, the last time I was here, we talked about the unawares. There's a place we gotta we have to get to that's beyond the normal. Normal is not good for you anymore. Normal is not what brought you through your hell. Normal is not what brought you through your pain. Natural is not what brought you through it. Take your quote here. He put a super on the natural. You only get that in the abiding. I got a clues because we got maybe... I'm thinking three more weeks in this series. Don't miss out on the body. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm talking about me too. We give space to so much, so many other things. And they really can't help us when we need help. He can. Not only that, he has greater for you. He has better for you. They're going to wonder where you came from. Don't even answer them jokers. You just say to yourself, I thank God for the body. Now, if they want the information in order for changes in their lives, you can tell them. But if they be a nosy, because <laughs> some folk ask and say, How did you get this? How did you do that? From the perspective of they didn't think you were worthy of it, from the perspective of they didn't think you were smart enough to obtain it. They didn't think you were capable of running it. Stop falling in agreement with them jokers. Stop falling in agreement with any and everything and everybody that's a naysayer and everybody that's not in agreement with what you heard in your body. If they don't connect with what you heard in your body, you got to disconnect for a season. Not out of hatred. What I mean by this, I'm talking about, I'm talking about audibly. I'm not talking about this only people, I'm talking about audibly. You can't allow them to contaminate what you get in the body. The body is too valuable. Are you ready for your next dimension? Oh my God. Oh my God. If trouble is a platform for promotion, look at your trouble and imagine what your promotion looks like. 
Oh, my God. I want to pray with those on Facebook for before they go. If there's someone out there today and you're like, I don't know anything about the vine. I don't know anything about Jesus. Now is your time. Don't let the moment pass you. Don't even create a narrative in your mind to where you say, well, I got to put this down. I got to put that down. I got to get, I got to deal with this. No, 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 no. Let God deal with it for you. He just wants you. He wants his child. He wants to communion. He wants a relationship. If that's you, I want to pray with you. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I come to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I believe God raised him from the dead. And you're saved. You may not be delivered from the Newports or from the Salem, from the Bud Light, the natural light. You may not be delivered from the Patron from the Henny and all that stuff. Yeah, I know. Been there, done that. But God is able. God is able. All he wants is your yes. Don't worry about the other stuff. Stop trying to dress it up. You just call on him. Let him know that you need him. He'll take care of the rest. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you, God, to forgive us, Lord, for omitting our abiding place. Father, forgive us for falling short of your glory. Forgive us, Father, for getting caught up in so many other things. Lord, we thank you, God, for an opportunity, God, or the opportunity, God, for the dwelling place, for the abiding, Lord. Lord, we open our hearts and our minds to you. And, Lord, we ask you, God, just to speak to us, God. Father, we ask you, God, to pull down strongholds. Father, we ask you, God, that healing will go forth, God, in mind, body, and spirit, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, that your voice would take over the airwaves in the name of Jesus. That your voice, God, would take over what's being echoed in the earthly realm. Send your word, God, that will activate the seeds that's been planted, Lord, so the abundant harvest of fruit will come forth. That we will walk in the supernatural. We will walk in the divine. We will walk in victory. We will walk in dominion. That we will be your ambassadors, God. Replenishing the earth with your glory. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you just to help us, God. Lord, we pray for restoration on today. We pray for mind renewal on today. Because there's so many things that are going on in our lives, God, that try to arrest our thoughts. But God, on today, God, we're recommitting ourselves to you in the name of Jesus. Because we want to abide in you and you in us in the name of Jesus. Father, I lift up each and every person that's present on today. And everyone that's in Zoom land and in the Facebook world. And Lord, I pray, God, that your glory and your presence will just fall fresh on them on today. That they will just feel your power, God, in the name of Jesus. We can't have transformation, God, without your power. In the name of Jesus. Father, I lift up my brother Al to you, Lord. 
lift up elders shout to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for being a healer, God. Lord, I ask you to allow your healing virtue, God, to just rest upon them in the name of Jesus. Let your healing, God, cause every irregularity in their bodies to align with your healing word in the name of Jesus and that everything will be brought back into alignment, God, as you created them, Father. Lord, let your glory just be upon them. Let your restoration dwell with them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, God, you give them beauty for ashes. We ask you to give them joy and peace, Father, in the midst of what they're dealing with, God, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we lift up the medical staff to you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to give them strength. Father, continue to lead and guide them, God, in the name of Jesus. Use them as your agents of healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the latter house, God. Lord, we claim the very thing that you're blessing us with. We claim the territory right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're going to be abiding with you, Father. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, God. We say thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Oh, come on, give God praise. I want you to praise God like you're expecting something new when you start abiding. Give God praise for the new thing he's about to do in your body. Oh, give God praise for the thing your eye have not seen, your ear had not heard, neither has entered into your heart. Amen, what God has for you. But give him praise, hallelujah, for your new normal. Oh, my God. Give him praise for your new lifestyle. Give him praise for the abundance of fruit. Give him praise for the connection. God, we thank you. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling. You can continue to praise him. Hallelujah. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. The only wise God, I say, you be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and ever. Amen. God bless you, virtual family. We love you. Look, if you want to become a part of the Ladder House family, if you want to join us, please reach out to us and let us know, 910. Okay. 910-236-9597. You can email me at pastorb at tlhministries.world. Amen. We would love to have you. We want to thank you again for everyone that's supporting. We've had so much outpouring of support financially in prayer and, and encouragement. We thank God for you. And Father, before we go, we had a request for special prayer. Father, I lift up Khadija to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, God, to uproot every seed that the enemy has planted in her life. I ask you to uproot every seed, God, and, oh my God, and burn every tear, God, that's dwelling in her atmosphere, her life, and in her territory. We ask you pull up and uproot everything that's been embedded in her heart and her mind that's not of you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask you, God, to plant seeds of new in her life. Seeds of transformation, God. Even give her a new root, God. So as the root goes down, God, the fruit will spring up, God, in the name of Jesus. Satan, we command you in the name of Jesus to take your hands off of her. She belongs to God. You have no rights to her in the name of Jesus. Father, draw her, God, with your loving kindness on today. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, God, that you would change the frequency that's attached to her hearing, God. That everything that's not aligned with you, God, will come in ecstatic. But your voice, you will hear clearly. In the name of Jesus. 
every so-called friend that wants to stay attached to her, if they want to be connected, we ask you, save them, God. Deliver them, God. Transform them, God. Renew their minds, God, in the name of Jesus. Use them in that Raleigh area for your glory, God. Use them, God, to carry the gospel in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to pull down strongholds in our life. Could these we decree and declare that you will no longer give voice to the devil? You will no longer put comments on social media. You will no longer uh, speak out of your mouth. Nothing negative that the devil is telling you. You will not speak or comment anything out of your mouth that does not align up with your prophetic destiny in the name of Jesus. We draw a bloodline around you in the spirit. And we take the spiritual shears and we cut off the umbilical cord that's been connected to you, that's been pumping things that are toxic in your life in the name of Jesus. Khadija, wherever you, if you're not driving, stand up, lift your hands up in the name of Jesus. And you give God praise. You tell God, thank you. Even if you don't see the manifestation right now, you thank him in advance. You don't have to wait for it. You praise him right now. You thank him right now. Because your praise is going to shift your atmosphere. Your praise is going to shift your surroundings. Your praise is going to shift your language. Your praise is going to cause everything that's trying to pull you down to be cut off from you. Your branch will no longer wither in the name of Jesus, but your branch will have fruit. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you, God, to give your angels charge over her to keep her in all her ways. In the name of Jesus. Even as she lays down asleep at night, God. Lord God, we ask you that you would suck every, every negative out of her subconscious and send your ministering angels to her, God, to minister to her even as she sleep. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you. Khadija, I hope you're praising him. I hope you're lifting your hands up. You tell God, I receive it. You don't have to lay you no know, five, six hours before him, but you start somewhere. You start at 15 minutes a day somewhere, just you and God. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that every, every seed that God has planted in your life will come forth. The weeds will not choke it out in the name of Jesus. Kelvin is sure you got to come into agreement with this in the name of Jesus. And you got a reminder of it. You got to echo it. Pray it in the name of Jesus. We lift up every parent in here right now in the name of, we lift up your children in the name of Jesus. Whether they're home or not, we lift them up and we pray that God cover them with the blood of Jesus. God, send your angels to encamp around them. Lord, be their refuge and their fortress in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, God, that you bind all hurt, harm, and danger in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. He we can't forget about our children. We got to intercede for them. Because technology has arrested their minds. Being accepted by others has arrested their minds. God is calling them to 
to a purpose, to kingdom. He's calling them to be different and not the same. Because they can be his agents even amongst the young people to bring them to salvation. The name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Lord, I pray for. She's not going to want me to call her name. But Lord, I pray for the lady God who's experiencing high blood pressure on this morning. In the name of Jesus, we command blood pressure to regulate right now. In the name of Jesus, every area of the body that's inflamed, that's causing the blood pressure to rise, we speak to the inflammation and tell you, you got to go in the name of Jesus. Healing is there now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Oh, we give you praise, God, and we give you glory. Lord, we ask you bless these, your people, in this week, God. Refresh them, renew them, refill them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Don't let them go in this week, God, with a negative outlook. Don't let them speak any negative words. But let them speak and echo what they heard in the abiding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you all. If God's placed it on your heart to be a blessing to the ministry, if you want to sow into this fertile ground, the information is on the Facebook page and our comments. We thank God again for each and every one of you. Be encouraged. We love you. We are praying for you. But remember, God loves you. In Jesus' name, we love you. God bless you.